All right. Welcome, everyone. It's a small audience. I think lahat ata may lakad ngayong Sabado, but it's all right. We're live streaming this right now on Facebook so people can uh, replay it later. Okay, we'll start in... Yeah, I think we can start now. So yeah, okay. Welcome, everyone, to... AI for Lunch. This episode is Art, Education, and Copyright. Actually, to be to be truth, uh, to be to be really honest, this was the least popular topic when I did a poll about a, a little more than a month ago. So I'm not surprised that we we have a small group. Plus, I announced it a little late because this week has been really busy. Uh, I had no less than three public appearances, so I had. Uh, an FOI event last Tuesday, and then of course I had uh, the AAP AI and Analytics Summit Wednesday and Thursday, and then in the afternoon of Thursday I also joined uh, a, uh, an exclusive group of Filipina CEOs, all talking about AI. So, but I said you know I'm a little tired, but this topic is actually quite exciting for me because it's going to be the most fun. So. This is going to be about art, education, and copyright. Actually, a lot of the noise uh, in AI today is actually about art, education, and copyright. So, yeah, hopefully uh, people find this uh, webinar useful. Uh, it's not going to be a very strict one. We're going to basically play with some tools so the people in the live Zoom audience, uh, you can ask some questions later. Hi, Roland. Good afternoon. Konti lang tayo today. Hopefully more people will join. So for, uh, for the rest of the human race who don't know me yet, my name is Doc Ligot, uh, and I've been doing these webinars for oh, going on two months already. This is episode four, but technically the fifth webinar we've done since we started with episode zero. Uh, as a brief, brief, brief background, I'm, I'm a, my background is basically data, data analysis, data engineering, data science. I worked for almost 15 years in, in banking. And then after that, moved into IT. And then more recently, I run a portfolio of AI companies. Uh, and as I keep saying, uh, I started doing this webinar series uh, because there seems to be a shortage of people talking about AI, or at least AI from a more practical standpoint. So the goal is to spread broad awareness of AI. And I also wanted uh, webinars that weren't too technical. Of course, from there will probably be a time when we do some technical webinars, but I wanted this to be very accessible to everyone and spur more practical discussions about AI. We had one episode dealing with ethics uh, and regulation. I think the majority of the noise you hear about AI now is actually about ethics and regulation, which is in a way good, but it's also bad because there's it's mostly doom and gloom. So I wanted to also shed light on the other aspects of AI that are more positive. This is also a high-level view. And although I've taken the effort to uh, provide references, I actually mix a lot of personal views here. You know? So just FYI. Uh, and all these materials are live streamed on Facebook, will be uploaded to YouTube. They're free and open source. So feel free to reuse them if you're doing uh, internal briefings. And then uh, at the end of the webinar, I'll also share a link for feedback, which will also allow you to get a copy of the slides I used. So please give me feedback no, on the series for future sessions. Okay. Actually, there were there were more than a number of people who registered. No? And I wanted to show, of course, this is not a, a, you know, a statistically significant sampling of the Philippines by any means. But it's interesting how people answered the question. So part of the registration question was, do you consider AI art to be art? And the majority are kind of on the fence. Maybe it depends. A uh, very small portion were actually hardline, which is for me a pleasant surprise. I thought a num um, majority of people were actually against AI art. Uh, there's actually all, more than double uh, of the people who actually think AI art is actually art. And then on the education front, I asked, should students uh, be, be able to use chat GPT? And mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's actually split between the yes and the maybes. So there is a time for it, according to some people. Um, uh, but uh, there's a smaller percentage of uh, people who, who think there are too many risks. 
Now, when you combine the two, it looks interesting. No? You know, this chart doesn't really look that helpful, but I tried to mix the two answers together. So how many answered maybe for art and maybe for uh, education? How many answered yes and yes and no and no? So the vast majority are in this bucket. They, uh, they're maybe on the art and they're also kind of uh, half and half on the education. Maybe this is a better way of viewing it. Now. So if this is 100% of everyone who filled up the survey, majority of people are on the middle of both the art and the education uh, front. So 41%. And then followed by the yes and yes. So again, this is very encouraging. So there's actually a quarter of at least the ones who registered, the population, who are quite open to AI as art and, and allowing students uh, to use ChatGPT. No? Um, the rest are all ano lang, minorities, lang, basically, no? 6% across the board. Uh, it's also interesting that just because you think AI can be used uh, in school doesn't mean you approve of AI as art. So talagang it's it the the, the audiences are similar pero not exactly you know exactly uh, the same. Oh, tama rola, no? it's, it's shifting to the positive. Buti naman <laughs> it's been all negative for for some time. Okay, sige. So what's our agenda? Well, I wanted to spend maybe maybe the first half of this uh, hour or so on just playing around with art. So for those of you following on Facebook or in the live audience, I'll do a demo you know, on several art generation tools. Uh ding music, actually. So na natin. And then uh, a brief discussion on each of the issues, the art discussion, an education discussion, and a copyright discussion. Because you know, it's, it's good to do that discussion after we've actually played with the tools so people kind of understand uh, you know, the context of it. Because if you're just listening to the doom and gloom and you've actually not used AI yourself, uh, it can be very biased, I say, or misleading. So the best way to, in my opinion, the best way to approach the conversation is actually to use the stuff first. And then let's see, you know, if uh, people are, uh, you know, still thinking the same thing. Okay, so as a preamble, I keep talking about a lot of historical stuff. No? And these are two moments in time that are worth reflecting upon. Once upon a time, in the this was during the transition period between the first and second uh, industrial revolution. There was uh, a time when photography wasn't considered art. Can you believe that? Basically, panahon ni Rizal. No? There were some photography, uh, uh, early photography being done already. Pero... As far as people were concerned, this was not considered uh, fine art, you know, more of a hack, uh, which is basically how AI art is probably treated today. And the main argument there is the, the activity being done is actually through a machine that accepts light. So parang people had trouble adjusting to the idea that if you have a machine that interprets light or uh, filters light, the outcome of that is still art because you had a human being using that machine. So that's an interesting thing to, to think about. No? And this was the case for almost, I think, 100 years. Tagal. Before, I think it was only in the shortly before World War I no? when photography started to become accepted as art in the mainstream. And I think for a few more decades after that, mm -hmm. medyo iffy ang mga tao. And then, but nowadays, we take it as a given. And then uh, we have... But in the 80s, I don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember, uh, there was a pushback against calculators in education because the idea was calculators will destroy kind of the math instinct in people because you rely on the machine. Again, very similar to how maybe chat GPT is being treated today. So the, the point I'm making here is this is not the first time we've had this love-hate relationship with technology actually dating back to... Ano pa, the early, kailan balo mo ba yung printing press? No? Early, uh, the late 19th century, uh, we've had a love-hate relationship with major technologies. Books are works of the devil. The TV will make everyone dumb. Calculators will destroy math. SMS, alala nyo yun? SMS, the Jejimon trend back in the day will destroy grammar. Wikipedia is unreliable. We'll talk about Wikipedia in a bit. Social media is full of lies. 
I'm wondering if people want to ban social media. And of course, the the big the big bugbear now is how AI will probably kill us all, no? You know, doomer doomerism. So again, if you look at the past trends, ganyan, no? Uh, so for me, it, it's actually if we use that sample as a as as a reference, it might be a good thing that uh, people are negative about AI because that probably means people are going to be more pragmatic about it as opposed to other technology trends where people were so positive uh, post later it didn't really pan out okay so yeah so let's go uh, to uh, no, uh, to the task at hand no? uh, Samir Roland please consider using Adobe Firefly yeah problema I don't have an active license right now so I'll be using the other tools but yeah feel free to share later no, in the work you've done with Adobe no? um, so yeah so Mid journey tayo. I think that's the most popular. No? Um, let me reshare my screen so that we can we can play with you know, we can play with uh, mid journey. No? Um, mid journey actually uh, nowadays requires people to to subscribe. So unfortunately, that you can do it for free. But I, I think it's uh, cheap lang naman, you know, uh, for those who really want to push the boundary of ano, no? uh, of uh, of AI art. I think Midjourney is one of the best places to start. Sabi nga ni Roland, there's also Adobe Firefly. So yeah, uh, feel free to ano, uh, suggest later no, some stuff. So Midjourney, if you sign up, it actually requires you to join this Discord channel. It's an interesting way of, ano, parang, uh, it's an interesting interface. No? And everyone else is here as well. So you get to share your artwork with people. So you can see here, this is a typical Discord chat. Uh, and people are are uh, no, are are typing prompts no uh, uh, on mid journey. Ang maganda rito is you can just get the prompt of someone and and just edit it and and then come up with your own original artwork no. So yeah, let's let's look for interesting stuff here. No? Dami mga stuff here. Oh, so people are doing uh, variations of the Titanic because of current events. Um, mamaya I'll also give ano uh, parang some of the best mid-journey prompts I've seen. Oh, look, look at this. Joe Biden in the style of the supreme leader. <laughs> okay, to, ah. Yeah, why don't we copy this? No? So the first, ano, the, uh, I think the most important prompt you should probably learn is the imagine prompt. No? So that's how you generate, uh, what do you call this, uh, mga images. No? Um, of course, we have to be very careful when using actual people like see Joe Biden. I think most of the more po more popular people are known by uh, Mid Journey, no? Mga popular uh, people in ano in cinema, uh, popular people in politics. So I guess it's kind of a fine line where you know you use these people. You just have to be careful later. One of the issues that I highlight is this can also be a venue for misrepresentation and of course uh, disinformation. No? So, sige, kung si Joe Biden and Jen, why don't we use uh, Donald Trump? I think, unless i-block ako ni, ni Mid Journey. So, yeah, you just type slash imagine, put the prompt in, and then the prompt is normally a subject in the style of something, and then if you want to have effects, you can type the effects in. And then there are these things called, uh, ano tawag dito, uh, suffixes. No? And then later, I'll go through some of the suffixes. So, imagine is kind of the basic, ano, basic uh, command that uh, you will learn notice pala as you as as the you know as the ai generates uh, art it constantly iterates no kasi nga the the process being used by ai here is called diffusion uh, similar to stable diffusion dali and uh, the, we'll probably tackle a technical discussion on how diffusion models work later pero the idea is the the way these models were trained was you have a specific image that was transformed into a you know a more diffused image and then later it reverses the process now. so here Donald Trump in the style of the supreme leader parang hindi naman niya naku ah yeah oh nga no mukhang nakuha niya ng konti yung expression ni ano ni Donald Trump no? look at that Donald Trump if he was in ano if he was in Star Wars <laughs> So ganun lang siya, no? That's how that, that's how it's done. Okay, another mid journey command is called blend. No, blend is an interesting command because blend allows you to com uh, combine two images. So if you type slash blend on the prompt, uh, you get to add two images. No, so sige, let's let's add two images. 
as it turns out, I actually have two images I wanted to to add here. There's this uh, scenery of Iloilo. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in so people know. No? Another tactic pala that you can use to upload to Midjourney is to upload it into a chat in Discord and then use the URL. No? So this is a screenshot of uh, Iloilo City. Uh, you know, that uh, interesting, nice uh, lighted bridge scene. That's one. And then I'm going to combine this with another image. Itong, uh, an image I actually generated earlier from Midjourney. This is a young Filipina in in gothic 19th century attire. No? So let's see if we can blend those two images, see what happens. No? So I'm going to go back to Midjourney. Um yeah, so I'm I'm adding the ilu ilu image. I'm also gonna add that Filipina image, and then yun lang no. You can add effects also later if you want. Pero I think just by doing that, you can mix the two images. So so the the way the the interface works actually, most of the image generation tools function similarly. Actually, one exercise I I'd like to do later if we have time is to compare how different image generate uh in image generation tools interpret the same prompt kasi makikita mo iba-iba yung iba-iba yung style nila no so as you can see here ito na nagge-generate na siya no uh, little by little the image is coming out so it's from diffuse to to fine image so kinuha niya yung photo of the 19th century gothic filipina and now she's standing on the Iloilo bridge no sana ba yun yeah, and look at that. I'll open this in my browser. Look at that. Oh, do mo kang fake pa rin siya. Kasi fake naman yung image na pinanggalingan. But look at that, no? Of course, the image uh, the the bridge has been reinterpreted by Midjourney, nagkaroon bigla ng second ano, column of lights. But it still looks very similar to the Iloilo bridge. I think nahalo na, na rin yung gothic uh theme. So you can see the railing on this street matches the the ano the the costume of the girl no interesting no how about that okay so we've seen imagine we've seen blend another basic command is describe no describe is um sometimes you don't know how to prompt an image uh kay mid journey so one approach is to upload an image and then get mid journey to describe it in a prompt and then you can use that as a as another prompt. So I uploaded another image. Sana ba siya? Ayan. This was the image I uh, uploaded. And then binigyan na tayo ng mga prompts. A beautiful image of a woman wearing an antique dress in the style of concept art. Tapos may mga ano na rin. May mga prompts na rin siya. No? Let's see. Ito, crystal and peach. Oh, okay. Here's another type of uh, prompting where you actually... Uh, mention an actual artist, and then later when we discuss kind of the kind of the copyright issues, um, yun yung ano yun yung problema no? uh, by mentioning an actual artist, are you in a way infringing on their work? No? Sige, I'll try this Crystal and Peach by Carissa Hansen. I don't know who she is though. No? Actually, that's one uh, I would say um, benefit probably of mentioning artists in you know in prompts and you see other people mentioning it in a way it can be indirect promotion of the artist as well so that's one conversation that i haven't heard anyone actually do where artists are actually freely providing their work to these image generation tools and then nagiging ano na, uh, inspiration for their work no? I, I think it's still kind of a fine line uh to do that no so, okay we'll wait for this Mabis naman siya. Crystal and Peach. O parang lumalabas. Crystal and Peach are two different people. Malabas, no? In the style of Renaissance-inspired Chia Chiaro Roscuro, detailed character expressions, realistic lighting, Western-style portraits. I don't know what this means. Cartel core, exotic princess core. Okay. Pero parang, o oh nga, no? Inspired nga siya, no? Okay, one, I think two more seconds before this thing comes out. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Wow. This this probably means these kinds of images were already fed to the model earlier. And then we're what we're seeing are like more variations of the photos. So, wow, it looks so lifelike. No? Although from time to time you see these things make mistakes. Eh? 
minsan sa fingers, minsan sa uh, sa hands. Although by the way pala, this is already based on the latest version of Midjourney. So you can actually prompt tawag dito the settings, no? And find out ano, find out what version of ano uh, Midjourney you're using. You can change the version, no? Either with the dash V command or you just select the version. So right now ang naka uh, what's selected for me by default is the uh, 5.2 version, uh, which is the latest. Uh, some people have been posting about how these images are kind of uh, different from what they were used to in previous versions of Midjourney. And this is not to say the previous versions are also actually bad. You might want to figure out then uh, what images work uh, best for you. So sige, we've done the first four. Basically, imagine generates an image, blend, mixes two images, describe, generates a prompt from an image, and then uh, settings gives you the query settings. So one thing to uh, talk about uh, specific to Midjourney is that uh, it's got these parameters, no, to mga suffixes. Like AR is the aspect ratio, uh, S is a parameter to to tell me journey how basically how creative do you want it to be. You can lower it if you want it to be more literal, or you can uh, raise the number if you want it to be a bit more fancy. Uh, there's this tile uh, parameter that allows you to create wallpaper, so each each image can can blend with other copies of it para maging repeating siya. Uh, the dash uh, double dash no uh, suffix is if you want to remove certain parts of the image that you don't want to appear. So means on you mga distortions, uh, if it keeps coming up, you can put a dash no and then you remove whatever is getting distorted. And of course, the the version uh, of the ano, ano, of the prompt. So one example that I'd like to use, this was a, a recent prompt. Now actually, I just copied from an existing uh, pra, you know an existing uh, prompt that I saw happening on the chat no. Yan ang masarap sa anime journey. As people are typing their prompts, you can just basically steal <laughs> their prompts and uh, replicate it. No? So I'm going to go back to my mid-journey and use that prompt. Imagine. Uh, okay. Let's copy yung kanina. Ano ko. So it says here, photo with the Canon DLSR of a young Filipina CEO um, sitting on a chair by the swimming pool. Not all. Wearing business casual, coral furl, enjoying, slightly smiling, summer. And then, yan, dash V, so it's mid journey five. Aspect ratio is three to two. Uh, stylized uh, parameter 750, and then no camera. Kasi minsan, if you say photo with a Canon, biglang lumalabas yung camera. So by prompting na the camera should disappear, uh, ano, wala na dun, no? So let's see if we can paste this. Uh, I.O. Yeah, okay. I'll change the subject. You can just get a prompt and then change whoever is in the prompt. So, sino kaya? Photo, Canon, R5. So, who do you want to see on this prompt? Can you anyone suggest in the chat? Who do you want to see sitting by the swimming pool, smiling slightly? Elon Musk. Sige, yun yung pinaka ano, popular. Actually, there's a uh, of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. And Mark Zuckerberg. Magkaka cage match daw sila, ano, di ba? In a few, I don't know kung kailan mangyayari. It's going to happen in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So you can actually imagine that already with Mid Journey and see how that happens. No? Okay, we got some people coming in the chat. Um, hi, Jogar. Uh, who else has joined us? Hi, Gina. Hi, Jo Marie. Uh, hi, Mary, Mary Caroline. Hi, Paula. Uh, and Roland, of course. Carlos. Uy, ito na. Lumalabas na yung photo. So again, you specified what kind of camera was used. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that doesn't work. The, the SLR of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg sitting on a chair by the swimming pool wearing business casual. Colorful, enjoying, slightly smiling. So hindi pa sila nagbubugbogan. <laughs> and then summer. And then yung mga parameters. Sige. I think we're about to get it. Two more seconds. Ayan. So I think Elon looks like Elon. Pero si Mark Zuckerberg doesn't look like Mark Zuckerberg at all. No? Looks like some other Silicon Valley dude. I wonder why that's the case. Unless I misspelled si Mark Zuckerberg. 
or they all they both look like Elon. It's like Elon talking to Elon or Elon talking to his brother. Yeah, but the lighting is pretty good. They still look sort of semi fake, and you animated paint sure and but yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So at least hopefully the ones who haven't been using uh, Midjourney, you have the basics already. Uh, I want to share the I know the some best practice prompts I've seen. No? Uh, and I got this from a website called Why Try AI. No? Uh, and I, I I actually used this to open a lot of my talks recently. So for those of you been watching my I know, my my appearances, it's a good way of know, of uh, opening. No? So there are five different prompts. You'll find this, you know, if you're uh, kind of a beginner with uh, mid-journey, uh, you, you, might, you might find this as a good way of, uh, of uh, getting started. No? So the first one is nulling. No? So nulling, as I explained before, is a technique in commercial photography. And it's, it's the art of laying out objects in right angles with each other and then taking a, a photograph. So this is actually a popular style of photography by some artists. And then now it's become part of, you know, uh, parang uh, mid-journey, ano na siya, mid-journey standard na siya. So I'm going to say uh, Philippine, tingnan nga natin if this comes out, Philippine food nulling. You can actually Google the word nulling. Huh? doesn't have anything to do with Mary Nol or a nol, which is a hill. It's more, it's really a proper uh, term for, ano, for uh, photography, no. So this is thing. This is waiting to start. Ato na. So nulling is this. It this should produce basically images that parang look look like they were laid out in a nice parang ano uh, photographic collage, no. And everything is in parallel or or right angles to each other. So ato na Philippine food nulling. And ano malabas ng food. So actually, maganda siyang mga cover shots, maganda siyang background shot for 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 anything you want, like a brochure or a PowerPoint presentation. And it's also interesting to reflect on. I didn't provide any other context. I just said Philippine food. So this actually gives you an idea of how Midjourney interprets such a term, no? yung Philippine food. Ayan. Totoo bang Philippine food yan? Pwede. This reminds me of ano eh, seafood island. I'm not plugging it, ha, but but I love eating there. No? Ito yung mga budol. Oh, look at that. No? Okay, so the key word is nulling. No? Another key word uh, that I like is double exposure. No? What's double exposure? Double exposure is exactly that. No? You have two, uh, dito, two images and then double exposed to each other. One double exposure that I did recently was woman plus terminator. Double exposure. Natin ko nung lalabas nyo. So parang the main image is the frame. And then the second image is exposed within that, that first image. It makes for some really, uh, I would say, dramatic uh, dramatic images. No, ito na. Malabas na. So I said woman plus terminator, double exposure. I don't know kung naintindihan niya yung terminator. As in Terminator, the Hollywood Terminator. Let's see. Last time I did this was before Mid Journey 5.2 was released. So it was in Mid Journey 5 or Mid Journey 5.1. So I don't know if this 5.2 uh parang edition will will cover cover it. No. Eh, ba, Roland, seafood island yung kanina. Sarap, di ba? I should maybe do seafood islands ano? advertisements para income. No? Actually, it's another thing that is kind of gotten the art world split. For some artists, the AI is actually a, 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 a benefit to productivity. For other artists, naman, they're seeing it as a copyright violation. So, ang ganda, oh, there's a woman, and then the second exposure is the, the Terminator. So, try various combinations. It's blank plus blank, double exposure. Okay. Okay, there's two more. Uh, we've already burned 30 minutes, but I think we can still do a few more. No? Um, let's jump to isometric because this 16-bit is boring. No? You might find the isometric uh, prompt uh, particularly compelling. No? So what's isometric? Isometric makes this parang mga tiles that look like they belong in a computer game. So I can say uh, 
Makati Skyline Isometric. Tingnan natin how that works. So you know, if you've played games like basically any 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 real time strategy game or mga Sim City type of games, so they're they're made of these isometric ano isometric uh, tiles, no. Uh, and this can be a good, actually a good cover art for your game no? or, or an inspiration if you're, if you're a gamer, come up with something. No? So let's wait for, for this. You can put any term you want, just my word na isometric. And then uh, I think the version is a default right now. You can always change the, the version later and see what happens. And then I think the last example I will do is uh, uploading a photo. And then using that photo as part of the prompt. No? I wonder why it's taking forever. Baka maraming gumagamit ng mid-journey. We'll come back to that in a bit. Sige. So, um, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll probably do the other demo later. No? But uh, I want to point you to a website called Why Try AI. It's actually, uh, ano, it's actually a, let's say, uh, a blog or a newsletter. And they have a lot of art prompts in it. No? Another good source of prompting is actually the Stable Diffusion web uh, ano, portal. No? In fact, I can, I'll go there right now. Well, ito na. Lumalabas na si Isometric. Sige, that's 46%. Sige, while we're waiting for that, you go to Stable Diffusion web prompts. Uh, and this one works to uh, works for Stable Diffusion, but it's interesting how other parang, uh, art uh, generators would use it. No? So, For example, you can type the word goth. And then ilalabas niya yung mga... Kasi when you do prompts on Stable Diffusion, you have the option of sharing your prompts to a community. No? Uh, and that's what they look like. No? And then you can use these as prompts for your work no? and see if you can replicate it. So ito na si Isometric. Ano ba yun? I said Makati City. Ah. I don't know. Parang hindi. <laughs> so that's what Isometric means. It becomes these tiles. No? Which can be, you know, really cool uh, imagery for your, I know, for your whatever it is. No? Maybe if you're doing some architecture work, this is not an architecture diagram. It's more of like parang creative uh, cover art, uh, or it can be a book cover if you're doing like an urban planning kind of, I know, uh, book. Parang ganun, ano. Okay, stable diffusion web. Um, sige, mamaya, we'll do a demo on that. I wanted to demonstrate also see si soundful. Soundful is uh uh ai generated music no so i'm going to go to soundful.com uh and i've already subscribed to it this actually is a good way of getting around a lot of the copyright uh, uh issues in youtube or facebook kasi nga they flag uh tracks that you know that that incorporate uh parang music from existing copyrighted work no? Uh, this is not really, I, I wouldn't call this parang, uh, you know, uh, a, a tool to generate original music. Mm -hmm. I would consider this more as a tool where you can generate uh, background beats no, for your, for your, uh, for your project. I don't know if you can hear this. No? Another way to, uh, no, to figure this out is you can also... Select a mood. Onyari, okay, mood. Mood is uh, coffee shop. And then you can set the... I'm not into music too much, although I studied piano back in the day. There's actually an ideal parang key if you want to inspire a certain mood, like for some action action music. Sabi nila, A, A, ano daw, a minor daw maganda. Pag relaxing, uh, F, F, F minor. Tapos if you want something a bit more reflective, you can go to D. I don't know. I'm just talking out of my ano lang, ano, out of my ass lang. No? So you, you select this. You can select the beats per minute. You can make it fast-paced or you can make it slow. And then you click uh, create preview. Gagawa na siya. No? Using the kind of the coffee shop template uh, and, ano, and the key that you just selected and the speed that you selected. And you can you can toggle it later. And then when you if you like the preview, oh yeah, medyo mabilis na D, no? I wonder if we can slow it down. Pwede, ano? Live slow down. And then apply. So, so this, I, I, I like this. This tool is great for content creators, no? Who want to add a touch of audio to their uh, to their work. And you don't have time to be looking for a 
tracks online. Ang kawawa dito yung mga background music vendors, no? This one is a little slow, no? And then if you like that, you can create a totally full track that can loop on itself, no? Okay. So I just wanted to, to demo that so people are aware that that thing is possible pala. All right. So, okay, you've got you've seen all of these art uh, tools. What's the issue? Well, right now there's there's actually a movement to use these tools to revive dead artists and the Beatles is one of the big ones. And on the one hand, that could be good for fans who want to, you know, I think si Paul McCartney yata is doing another Beatles uh, uh, track featuring the the voices of his dead colleagues, no? Pero paano yun from an ethics standpoint? Lalo na in literature, for example, people are, uh, you know, uh, utilizing uh, works that have already expired copyright after 50 years. So will the same thing apply to music, which is relatively newer? No? That's a mm -hmm. question. Although you have like old classical music already being utilized everywhere, the question there is what can you, you know, what can you do with this kind of work? So that's one ethical question. Uh, another conversation is about, similar to the, the photography question earlier, is the AI-generated art a machine-generated art? Or is it still technically human? Because human also provided the prompt, provided the inspiration uh, no, uh, of that artwork. And uh, especially when it comes to music, no? And I think understood if it's a human voice being used to provide the music. Um, pero what if it's AI generated uh, voices? Uh, how does how does that work? And according to this article, really for something to be considered art, it should still be in a way traceable to the humans. No, that's the problem. No, um, and there's an ongoing. I don't know how they've resolved it. Writers strike uh, in the in the states. Uh, you know, because writers are now finding that their work, like mga copywriters, screenwriters, uh, there's less and less demand for them uh, as time passes because nga AI can already add uh, basically copyright. No? And then from a, I think there's the third angle, from a finance standpoint, although it's good that you can generate a lot of art very quickly, uh, there's also a question of commercial viability. If artists are finding it harder and harder to generate, uh, uh, to monetize their work, you might just end up killing the art industry altogether. And then what's, what, what you're left with is all of this AI-generated stuff. And that's, uh, that's going to be sad. No? So the, these are kind of main issues that we need to deal with. So again, this is still an ongoing discussion, I think. Uh, it's not settled at all. In fact, countries are split. Like uh, in the same week that the EU released rules on AI art uh, or AI generative AI in general, uh, Japan actually said uh, AI generated art will not be subject to copyright in their country. So So in my head, I have like four questions here no, that uh, should prompt discussion because now there are regulations being contemplated about AI art. Uh, if you prompt AI, is that also like painting? Parang same question as the photography. No? And then, is AI art considered expression of the AI artist? So parang kanina, when I was saying isometric, double exposure, I was just doing it mechanically. Could I do it in a way that expresses kind of something that I want to express, which is part of the process of generating art? No? Uh, in my head, yes. No? But people might, not, might disagree. Uh, more on a more technical level, is training an algorithm on an existing artwork? Is it already plagiarism if you do that? I say right now, or or are you just being inspired? Because later, when uh, when we finally find time to discuss the technicalities of you know, of uh, of these models, the existing art is uh, converted to pixels, but the pixels themselves are not retained in the model anymore. It's kind of an abstraction of it, or embedded version of it. So technically, it, it's not the original artwork anymore. It's kind of like a representation of that artwork. And then that's what's being prompted to generate new artwork. So yun yung parang technical question. No? And even I don't know the answer. And finally, from a commercial standpoint, can we figure out a way to compensate the artists whose work has been embedded into the model? I think that's where potential 
uh, opportunities arise. No? Especially since art also made a big splash in the in the blockchain land with NFTs. No? So can AI also adopt something similar where you know specific art and prompts can be attributed to certain artists? Sa YouTube na yari na yan, eh, where uh, if you're if you use a portion of copyrighted audio, for example, the monetization goes to the owner of that. And then you you kind of balance that no? with uh, restrictive restricting art. Okay, let's jump to education. No? Um, I might be able to do some uh, parang ano, uh, demos as well. So Wikipedia, I want to talk about Wikipedia because this is an earlier version of what's happening now. Up to today, in many schools I know, citing Wikipedia is actually not allowed. Funny enough, Wikipedia can be a source of other citations. Because one thing about I like about Wikipedia is it gets edited all the time, but the citations are added by people. And for some of the Wikipedia, many of the Wikipedia articles, the citations are pretty legit. So ito yung mean, no? Uh, teachers don't like it when you say Wikipedia, but if you use the sources of Wikipedia, parang okay lang. And I think you extend that to like the internet in general or or even ano, chatbots, that's the problem. No? Um, this is fresh off the press, no? couple of days ago lang. Si Harvard is uh, launching its chatbot for CS50 or their computer science course. So students in CS50 will be encouraged to use the AI for debugging code. So I find this, in a way, a positive development. It's not to say that the chatbot will actually teach the course, but the chatbot has already been trained with all of the material of the course. So I think this helps cut through uh, an interesting bottleneck where if you want to consult your instructor or your professor, you can't find them, at least you can use the chatbot. So I'm very encouraged by this uh, development where you know uh, a chatbot is uh, a way of augmenting the teacher. Oh, sabi ni Roland, uh, double standard. Oh, tama. <laughs> if you use the citations of Wikipedia, okay lang, but not Wikipedia itself. Um, I don't know if how many of you have used Perplexity. Perplexity is a, a chat GPT clone. I think I have it open here. No, ito. Where, which gives you um, ano, citations from the internet. Like for example, itong WHO prepares for El Nino. So meron na siyang mga footnotes. And the footnotes lead to actual links online. And I find that quite... Ano, quite uh, it's a good middle ground because what happens with uh, other chatbots, especially if you do zero-shot prompting, which I would discourage actually. Zero-shot is you just ask it a question. Um, you don't know where it got the answer. And perplexity is an attempt. It's a different group of people to come up with a middle ground where you know, people uh, can check where the info came from. It doesn't mean that just because my citation tama, <laughs> maybe the, the source is also wrong. Another one is consensus, um, which I learned from a colleague of mine, sa AAPC, uh, Professor Art. No? So the consensus is more on research. No? So my favorite, oh, let's just use the prompts here. No? Um, what's the best treatment for restless leg syndrome? No? So there are mga, mga citations. And you can check these. These are actual papers. That's the problem with chat GPT once upon a time. The citations were all fake, or some of them were fake. And it, the reason is because... Nga, these chatbots are not trained to provide actual facts, but more of statistically probable text. So now the the the, the discussion is how do you fine tune these ano, these uh, chatbots? No. Uh, ah, this one I demoed this in the uh, previous episode. This is really worth looking into. Not specifically this uh, app. It, it's one of many. But if you're in the education space, one of the toughest things to do is how, how do you generate lesson plans uh, quickly? Because it's very hard to do it and you have to all these, ano, you have all these requirements. No? So dito sa Learning Studio AI, I just opened a, a new account. You can just type any topic you want. So, kunyari, using generative AI in classrooms. Yeah can be as high level as that. And in 90 to 120 seconds, it will come up with a full online course for you, which you can then use for uh, you know, lesson planning. No? So while that's loading, we'll come back to that later. And I, speaking as an educator, I find this really encouraging that there is now an emergence of tools that can also help 
the teachers, not just for not just the students. Actually, yun nga dapat ang mangyari. Can you student, t- students and teachers are supposed to freely collaborate using these tools rather than trying to ban them. No? Um, you can check this website. I found this uh, useful. Tong, uh, well, the, the source is here sa baba. No? Cointelegraph, five AI tools for learning and research. And it mentioned consensus and some of the others. Consensus is what I showed earlier. These other tools are either there to help grading or to help reviewing semantic scholar is like consensus then it gives you citation so there's now a, a more positive move to get ano, to get ai involved in various uh, parts of the learning experience no? balikan natin si learning ai ah, hindi pa hindi pa tapos okay one thing that i think hounds the use of ai even up to today is plagiarism no and i found one tool uh, that is showing promise no but it's not foolproof. Itong si content scale. So I'll go to that right now. Saan si content scale? Ah, yan na. Lumabas na yung course natin. Oh. Using generative AI in classrooms. Overview. And then a review of text generation. May outline na rin. So ito yung chapters niya. Text, image, creative, practice, wrap up, and then may quiz. Di ba? How about that? 120 seconds and you have a totally new ano totally new uh, uh, um, course. No? Sige, I want to show content scale no? para makita nyo. Content scale content scale.ai That it? Yan. AI content detector. Yan. You can uh, use uh, text or images. No? So try images. I'll upload one image that I did. And so sabihin niya if the image was probably AI generated or probably human. So ito yung preview and nakalagay dito. Probably AI. And it probably human. Oh no. <laughs> so it got fooled, no? Let's try another one. Try natin itong si Filipina. Uh, check for AI. So this is what I'm saying. That's why in if you caught my keynote, ito medyo 50-50. 58% AI, 42% human. I think it depends on the subject siguro. Um, the the detection tools right now are not yet foolproof. They're still uh, subject to error. So, for example, you can let's try the text one. No, if you do a zero shot uh, text, so I'll go to chat uh, ano, ch- uh, chat GPT. No, I'll just say, uh, what is what is artificial intelligence? And, and it's gonna give me some boilerplate text. I'm gonna copy this. And put it sa content detector. Check. Okay. So usually, na, nasa spot niya yung ano, ayan, no? likely to be AI. Thumbs down. <laughs> nasa spot niya if it's zero shot. But what if it's a summary? No? So let's get a, uh, like an article. Hanap tayo ng article na ano maganda. Yung some article na lang on IME Marcos yan IME seeks regulation of artificial intelligence no? and in one of the in one of the episodes i i showed people how to use chat gpt for summarization so let's just say i'll summarize this no? summarize this text in five bullets ayan ayan i wonder if the content generator will figure it out Yan. So, ito yung five bullets na galing. See? Likely to be human. So, I think this is the ano, this is the, the loophole where if it's zero shot, nahuhuli niya. But if it's more of a, you know, uh, like a summarization of an existing human ano, human article, uh, it cannot detect that it was summarized by an AI. On the other hand, I, I wouldn't think of that as a big deal right now. And personally, I encourage students to actually use AI to summarize articles. Uh, all I'm saying is it's 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 really hard to to use AI to spot uh, you know AI con, uh, generated work for now. I'm sure there will be better models in the near future, but that's the you know that's the reality that we're facing today. No, it's not it's not foolproof, and this has a major impact on disinformation because you know uh, AI can be used to provide you know misleading text. And you can prompt the AI to write it in any style the, uh, it wants. No? So similarly, I have some open-ended questions. No? Speaking both as an educator and uh, kind of a participant in this 
Number one, our essay is dead. Because <laughs> that's the natural consequence if you allow AI to write stuff. Uh, in many discussions I've had with fellow teachers and educators, parang the move is we go back to oral recitation, which is hard to fake um, somehow. No? Or you, get, you literally force students to use chat GPT to write something and then have them challenge or, or confirm what chat GPT is saying. Uh, another uh, problem that this aggravates is in the pandemic, we already suffered a lot of a, a loss of student-teacher interaction because everyone's online. Lalo na here, if you have a chatbot doing most of the interaction because the professors are too busy writing their papers, it'll just worsen that or will it worsen that? And then the accuracy question, although you saw perplexity earlier uh, and consensus, that's always an ongoing challenge. And the use of research in, in citations. No? Um, like, can you cite ChatGPT as a co-author? Some of the earlier papers this year na lumabas mentioned ChatGPT as a co-author. Uh, but I don't think there's consensus yet. No? Like this is a screenshot from Elsevier, one of the popular repositories of ano, no? Mga scientific uh, journal uh, works. Nakalagay dito, authors are allowed, let's zoom in no? so you see what I'm reading. Authors are allowed to use generative AI and AI-assisted technologies before submission, but only to improve the language and readability of the paper and with appropriate disclosure. Editors can find such disclosure at the bottom of the paper uh, before the references. If an editor suspects that an author or reviewer has violated the policy, they should inform the publisher. No, and it says here, Elsevier also owns identity-protected AI-assisted technologies to review the manuscript. So, nangyayari na yan ngayon. So, in a way, I, I see this not really as a kind of a restriction, but more of a guidance. Na if you're using ChatGPT to improve the language, just mention it. Uh, but as you saw earlier, it's really hard. It's really hard to detect. Really hard. Okay, what about other issues? No, um, disclosure. I'm not a. I'm not an intellectual property expert or lawyer. Uh, but maybe this is a good thought starter and you can uh, maybe we'll do another webinar with with an IP lawyer like see si attorney uh, Jello Santiago who was a panelist in AI Summit the other day. Uh, but just for kind of info's sake, no, if you look at our uh, Republic Act 8293, some some relevant uh, ideas or passages. No? If you create something, the copyright belongs to you. That's the bottom line. If you create a derivative work, or a new work inspired by an original work, you have copyright on what you created. Now, the question is, did you replicate or reproduce enough of the original work that you're now violating the copyright of the original artists? No. So the, the law says substantial amount of uh, the original work, but who will rule on how substantial is substantial? No. And then there's also uh, trademarks, which are registered logos or images uh, that's actually quite strict. Even if you create a, like a, an, exa parang an example would be, let's say, the McDonald's logo, and then you change the color of the M, pwede kang madali doon because any distortion or similarity or anything that could cause confusion uh, is protected no, under the IP code. And then as a summary of, as a copyright owner, these are your rights on your work. You have the right to... Uh, reproduction. So no one should be able to reproduce your work uh, or a substantial portion of it. Uh, any transformation of the work, and this applies also to audio, you know, inspired by, you know, when you do covers, uh, that's a gray area. But according to this, the original owner has uh, the right no? to say that nah, you shouldn't be doing covers of my work. Public distribution of the original, rental or copies of the work, any public display performance. I think the public part is the big deal. Eh? I mean, no one stops you from reproducing all this work in your house no? or, or in private. But once you start putting it out in the open, claiming it's yours, or uh, even worse, uh, earning money from it, that's a problem. No? Um, this is a, I, I, keep, I keep talking about this, an existing lawsuit of Getty uh, versus Stability AI. No? And you can see here, the images are likely I know, inspired by this original. But one thing that could really uh, 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 create the infringement is e the Getty image logo was also reproduced by the by the image generator. So clearly, galing siya dun sa Getty na uh, repository, although it's garbled. You'll also see this on some 
works generated by Midjourney, na you know a distorted version of the logo appears, no. And then that also now uh, crosses over the music industry. Like there was a recent song by Drake. Actually, it wasn't by Drake. It was inspired by Drake. So it uses Drake's voice, uh, the musical beats, etc. But completely AI generated, and it actually topped the charts. Actually, they weren't worried about it when it came out. They were worried when it started trending and the music label uh, that owns the work of Drake requested for it to be taken down from Spotify. You know? And then we talked about the Beatles question earlier. So this is going to get messier and messier unless there's a standard that gets implemented. But again, both extremes are bad. Eh? You can say, oh, sige, no more copyright, and then all the artists will suffer. And then on the flip side, you can be so strict that uh, there's actually a version ata of stable diffusion that doesn't have any copyrighted images. And guess what? It sucks. Because, <laughs> uh, of course, the best images are copyrighted. Uh, examples of uh, possible identity theft, like this was a viral series of pictures. Of course, we know that uh, Prince William and Putin would never be in Divisoria having taho. No? But, but that's us. Other people might not be as astute. No? And now it's a fine line between disinformation and uh, and satire. We need to be quite mindful of this, especially now if you mix images and now video. Paren, palaw na demo ng video. There's actually AI generated video already, and it's getting better. And then you have text. You can really write up a totally fictional narrative online, and people will fall for it. And that's why there are some pending bills. So I'm somewhat disappointed. I mean, current events. No, we invited the three lawmakers to join the AI summit last week. No, and uh, one of them actually sent a video, but I don't think it was played anymore. The other two were probably too busy. I would have wanted to have a more open discussion on the laws that they want to push, uh, like about jobs, about copyright. See, Congressman Salceda is talking about copyright a lot. Uh, and what they're proposing is actually quite draconian. The proposal is if any website is seen using images that infringe on an artist's copyright, the move will be to ban that website, take it down. Uh, maybe the NTC will do it. But number one, who will decide no? who, who got infringed? See, Barber's demand is more about consumer protection, creating an agency. To the point that, as I mentioned earlier, countries are not in agreement of how this works. Like, this is within two days of each other, you know. Japan said no copyright violation for AI, and then EU said we have to consider copyright. This is one of my favorite photos to date. No, it's basically a checklist done by Stanford Research Foundation on how much would these major vendors comply with the AI Act requirements. No, it's still a draft. Uh, di pa siya law, but it's now the inspiration. And there are two lines that are relevant to this discussion, the copyright and machine-generated content. And you can see most of them actually don't consider copyright. Ito lang si Eleuther AI uh, is conscious. In fact, all of them would fail the compliance test. None of them comply with more than half of what's required. No? Ito lang si Hugging Face, siguro. And still, even on the copyright, it's not 100%. So this is uh, an interesting uh, conundrum that we need to consider. Um, uh, when, when when we have these discussions. Though. Okay, I think we're at the hour. Uh, I wanted to give time for questions, so I'll I'll jump to the, the looking forward. First is, uh, thanks to the few people who actually showed up. This was obviously the least popular topic, apparently, but I hope you picked up something. If you want to get a copy of the slides, uh, uh, please fill up the usual uh, uh, feedback form. I'll paste it also here on the chat and on Facebook. Bitly slash AI for lunch art. It's cop it's case sensitive pala. Be be you know, be mindful of that. Uh, and that pretty much wraps up all of the default topics we were uh, you know, uh, supposed to talk about earlier. No? So we've now had five webinars and you know uh, it looks like mukhang there's appetite for a few more. You no know? uh, at the same time I've been doing a lot of uh, private briefings to companies, to mm -hmm. schools. So if you or anyone you know wants a briefing, uh, sure, right, one hour lang on AI, please contact me. Iba namang usapan yung consultation naman later. But on briefings, um, I'm quite uh, flexible. Um, yeah, see, Carlos pasted the link here, no? AI for Lunch Art. I'll also put it on the, uh, on the FB Live. 
And then um, just as a sneak peek, um, Serolytics, uh, one of my companies, is will be launching a series of design workshops. And the idea here is uh, implementing and using AI is quite easy, but the reasons for doing so, like creating use cases, creating uh, ideas, or if you're a startup and you're looking to create ideas uh, around AI, baka kulang. So Serolytics can help you there. If you want more information, you can email them, but there will be a public launch soon. So I don't want to preempt it, but I just wanted to announce it here. And at the same time, uh, here's my customary invitation to please follow me on all the social accounts. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. I've also been trying to get more active on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So all of these videos will get uploaded to, to YouTube uh, as well. And yeah, with that, let's jump to the Q&A, no? Sige. Um, does anyone want to ask a question? You can just unmute or type here in the chat. In the meantime, I will post the link muna on the ano, on the Q and A box, no. Uh, or maybe we can do that demo, no. Kung wala naman magtatanong, no. So, but first, any questions from the crowd? I also got some questions from ano ba? From the registration, no, which I'll try to cover in a bit, no. Uh, let me put muna tong. Uh, it's uh, cheap, lang naman, you know, uh, for those who really want to push the boundary of, ano, no, uh, of, uh, of AI art. I think Midjourney is one of the best places to start. Okay. Sabi nga ni Roland, yeah. there's also Adobe Firefly. So yeah, uh, feel free to. Ano. Yeah, that was the Facebook. Yeah, here's the slides. Slides and feedback. Link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sige. If there's no one, no one's asking a question, here's a here's a question from from the registration. What's the appropriate prompt to generate desired AI in art and education? Well, if you saw earlier the what do you call this, the Learning Studio AI, I, I recommend you check that out. That's actually quite useful as a as a starting point, no? If uh, you want to uh, no, want to generate uh, le lesson plans. At the same time, the use of consensus and perplexity, I would highly recommend. Uh, for art naman, um, sige, why don't we do the, the demo now? No? Uh, just me paste the slides and feedback link on Facebook. Sige, um, let me reshare my screen. What we'll do is let's find out how different AI generators tackle the same topic. No? So asa na siya? Stable diffusion. Let's just get a prompt from stable diffusion. Yeah. Let's get a prompt. Uh, ano ba maganda? Um, Pixar animation. Magandang... Oh, ayan. So, ayan, maganda yun. Sana ba yun? Um, photo of Madison Beer, college woman, future cyborg. Okay, that's that's cool. So, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it in mid-journey. No? Imagine. Ayan. Okay. And then, I'll also use stable diffusion uh, web. And here, enter your prompt. Generate image. Sana hindi maghang yung system ko. This is Dream Studio, which is also by uh, Stability. It's kind of their higher-end uh, parang system. Uh, so I recommend just just like ano, Mid Journey, if you're really into art, I would give it uh, a try. Tapos si Roland said, ano, Adobe Firefly, no? Ito ba yun? Adobe Firefly. Another one I really like is uh, crayon. Dito you can specify you want it art, drawing, or photo. No? So let's try art, draw. So apat na yan. Ah, oh, look at this. Photo, no, fo uh, photo of Madison Beer, whoever she is. College woman, future cyborg woman. Oh, pwede na. Although I don't know if anong ethnicity niya. No? Stable diffusion, ito naman ang itsura. Uh, medyo abstract, no? This is mid-journey naman. Ah, hindi pa. Waiting to start. Ayan, lumalabas na. Um, let's try Dolly. Labs, openai.com. Uh, in my experience, Dolly is usually the least, I don't know, uh, attractive of all of the generators. I think it's because they were, ay, 
this request may not follow our content policy so ayaw ni Dolly. Si na open AR are being more ano are being very careful na kasi nga nakita nilang kinasuhan si ano si stability no. Look at that. I don't know who Madison Beer is. Is that a character from a popular series? Oh nga no. It's an American singer. Ah okay, hindi ko siya kilala. Well ngayon kilala ko na siya. Oh. All right. Okay. Adobe Stock, Abstract 3D Splash with Amorphous Forms. Oh, ito, tara, let's use this prompt na binigay ni, ano, uh, na binigay ni Roland. Explore Firefly. I have to sign in pa. Do I need to sign in? Yeah, try natin kay Mid Journey. No? Imagine. Yan. I'll also send it to the others. Generate. Crayon. Ah, crayon looks cool. Look at that. Although medyo distorted yung yung eyes, no? Yeah, let's try this one. And then Dolly. Ayaw ni Dolly kanina. So maybe Dolly will accept itong prompt ni Roland. Okay. Patali, malabas na. Okay, so this, this is what came out of Stable Diffusion. Gandang wallpaper. This is what came out of Crayon. Ay, hindi pa tapos. Dream Studio. Ah, I didn't try Dream Studio. Okay, let's try that. Burning my credits as I speak. 62%. Ah, to, lumabas na. This is what Dolly gave. Oh, okay. Not bad. Saan mo yung prompt na yan, Roland? Do you do ano, uh, art, uh, background art for, for publications? Ang ganda. I do prompt engineering. Everyone does prompt engineering. <laughs> okay, sige. Let's go to the next question. How can AI help artists in creative work? So, ah, you work for Adobe. That's great. Um, well, as I said, I would consider AI to be uh, more of a productivity uh, boost for artists, especially if you're into commercial art. I think that's also the fine line. Even before AI became popular, there's really a divide between people who use art to make money and those who use art to express. There's also an overlap. And I think the 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 they're they're impacted differently, pala, in my view. No? The ones who are doing it commercial for commercial purposes, they obviously see their livelihood getting impacted. And the ones naman, who use art for creative expression are now in a way debating whether the art generation process constitutes creative expression or you're just pressing a button in a machine. I obviously believe it is a form of creative expression, especially if you're able to string together a series of artwork. Uh, and I use it a lot in our content creation also. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it really needs a bit more discussion. But I think the big bugbear talaga is the commercial impact. Uh, Carlos asks, what role should education institutions play in preparing students for the legal and ethical aspects? I think the bottom line here is, I don't know how much, uh, I can only speak of the, because uh, I helped one university author a master's degree no, in, in analytics. We were very adamant that there should be at least several courses on not just the legal, but also the, the ethical aspects of not just uh, AI, but also data and business. And I would imagine this is not one of the first things people want to take you know, when they want to get into AI or when you want, they want to get into uh, analytics. What you want to take is programming or you know, data engineering. But really, because these systems are now basically used for, for many things in industry, we need to approach it the way architects would approach their profession. You know, if you're designing buildings or designing structures, you need to be compliant with certain codes. Uh, not that we want to have strict uh, codes in place yet, but approach it professionally that way. Another source of inspiration is the medical field. You know? um, for a drug to be released in, you know, in the public domain, it has to pass several clinical trials. And you have doctors who can issue prescriptions and then pharmacists who can serve the, the prescription. In other words, a doctor should not be able to give you medicine. You should go to a pharmacist for that because you want to regulate certain drugs that could be abused. No? So that's a, a challenge for AI at the moment. No? 
Roland says we should start a conversation with a growth mindset. No? That's correct. Because there's a knee-jerk reaction happening right now. And I'm actually worried that we might actually accidentally re- over-regulate ourselves and then we're, we're taken out of the conversation again. Okay. Added questions. There was one in the registration. What tools are available to identify AI manufactured output? So yung kay content scale is one of the more, I would say, useful ones. Although you saw it, but it still makes mistakes. Uh, academics use Turnitin a lot, but I found that Turnitin can be fooled a lot by, you know, by AI-generated text. And then there was a paper that came out that seemed to be able to distinguish between AI and human-generated work uh, with a very high accuracy, but it's still just a preprint. It hasn't been peer-reviewed. So I would definitely consider this space parang a work in progress. So right now, the question is, if you're, for example, in, the, in school, I think the appropriate perspective would be how do you make your curriculum more not just AI proof, but more of using AI instead and incorporate other activities. The challenge naman talaga for educators is even if you have these trailblazing ideas, you you will not be, uh, you can't just implement them in any school. You have to go through the, you know, the administration, you have to go through your department chair, and they, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Schools are some of the most bureaucratic and hierarchical organizations by design. Up, no? Roland said forensically for images. Um, I don't know if you've actually looked at some of these uh, images other than I say we, an edited image, you can check for forensics, no? but the original originally generated images, unless you've already trained the markers that you're looking for, you won't find any you know, alterations. Eh? It's literally an image. You know? Like Laluna, if it's not a photo, let's say a cartoon or something, it's hard to really. Uh, look for errors because those are quite easy to simulate. But again, it's just early days. Perhaps somebody will figure out a way of, uh, of doing it. Where do we put the line to determine whether the piece is original or not? No? Um, I think this is more of an intellectual property discussion. Um, what means? What does substantial derivative uh, work mean? And even before AI, that's been a problem. You know? When you say, hey, hey, I'm inspired by the Mona Lisa, created my own version. Or there are people who replicate yung mga works ni na Juan Luna and Amor Solo. I mean, it's a, it's a painting style. Can you really copyright that or the subject matter? So I think that's a question. In fact, some of the mid-journey prompts I provided earlier, these were uh, recognizable art styles of certain artists, yung mga modern artists. No? So... Um, I think this needs discussion no? uh, in the in the art uh, community and how you would determine that. And so far, I've I've only seen very early discussions of it, other than the legal one. Somebody asked, "What's the latest in brain computer interfaces?" I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe it's in another webinar. We'll cover it. Uh, Roland says, uh, "Styles cannot be copyrighted; only the work." Correct. No? Kaya when you make an argument na, hey, that's my style, it's really, uh, you know, you're really treading on slippery ground there. You know, how can you say pointillism is your style no? and only yours? And even if you started a certain style, like, like lalo na if it's mixed media or multimedia kind of work, um, which is uh, a, a bit more unique for some artists. Like, kunyari si, ano, si H.R. Giger, no? who's the artist the late H.R. Giger, who's the artist that inspired the Alien franchise, no? the design of the Xenomorph and tong mga industrial organic type of art. Can you say that that's copyright Giger? No? Uh, yun yung tanong eh. Because some people are replicating that already. Okay, we still have a few more mi- uh, minutes. Here, here are some comments. No? The appropriateness of AI use should be considered. Selfie filters still use AI, yet no one clamors against it. Because it's fun. Eh? I think the, like I remember there was this app called Face App where you can make yourself older or younger or make someone smile or remove a smile. Uh, apart from that has some slight ethical problems where you can alter, like there was someone who was you, parang universally panned. No? Ang ginawa niya, he got photos of Holocaust victims no? in World War II and, they made, and he made them smile. No, as part of his collection, and people found that 
uh, you know, obscene. Na parang you're violating the the memory of these people who died in the Holocaust. Uh, for me personally, you don't know. Eh. It, yeah, it, you could be violating it or you could be paying them a tribute. Uh, depends on how sensitive you are about about people's memories. No, like I might actually do that with the, some of the photos of my late father. You know, as a as a tribute. No, but uh, again, it depends on someone. No. AI should be leveraged by humans. It should not control humans. Uh, I think as a general principle, I would agree. But right now, we're already being controlled by AI. We're controlled on social media. We're being controlled here on Zoom. Uh, so in a way, we're, we're, our, our habits are already dictated by technology. So what I think the bottom line is you should be aware first if you're being controlled or not. And sometimes these, you know, these uh, initiatives or these uh, strategies are invisible to people. The appropriateness of AI, Annette, I think this is a replay. Art, AI and art is good, but in moderation. As with many things, naman, ganun talaga. Uh, Roland mentions content on authenticity initiatives. So is that a thing? Um, it's good that you mentioned that. It's first time to hear it. Content authenticity initiative. Okay. Is this the website, contentauthenticity.org? Is that it? Okay. So yeah, I'm sharing it here uh, on the webinar for everyone, even the Facebook audience. Now, please check it out. I would like to look at this. For me, there are many initiatives like this. Uh, even in kunyari, corporate, uh, corporate governance, there's this thing called the ethosphere, which looks at you know the performance of ethical companies no? so the world's most ethical companies in the world no and that's uh that's the work of the ethosphere no? you can't nominate yourself <laughs> i guess that's uh that's a good thing no uh you can only be nominated by your clients or your partners or even your competitors can nominate you and there was actually research that was done way back in 2013 i think where uh, some researchers look at the financial performance of the world's most ethical companies as defined by the ethosphere and compared to the general market. And they found that ethical companies actually outperform uh, you know, these, uh, the, the market at large. So Adobe is quite active in this content authenticity initiative. This is really good. Um, I haven't been that deep with the art scene, so this, it's good that we mention it here. And maybe we can do a follow-up webinar on that content authenticity initiative. So, yeah, so we're already at uh, 10, uh, 20 minutes past the hour. This is supposed to end at uh, 1.30. Um, yeah, Roland, if you have need more info, please, please share it. You can also reach me uh, via social or Put it on the feedback form para we can build content around that. No? I'd like to talk more about that. I'm also part of several organizations like the AAP, of course. Uh, there's this group called the Ambit, which I shared in another episode, and they're lobbying for more proactiveness from the government. I, I think the... the I, of course, it would be great if government got active, but I think there might be better chance that communities and private sector take the initiative because we're the ones using the tools anyway. I think that's uh, probably more promising. But certainly if we can get more people involved, uh, the better. No? So again, any more questions from the group? I'd like to thank the small group we have here on the live Zoom. Carlos, uh, hi Dean, nice to see you. Edel, Gina, Jogar, Jomarie, Mary Carolyn, Paula, and Roland, of course, no, you've been very active. Actually, I'm thinking about launching a community, no? but maybe I'll talk about that in another webinar. Kasi parang wala rin AI community that's quite active about these issues. There were a few AI communities, ironically, a few years ago, but now they're all quiet for some reason. Maybe they're too busy generating art. Okay, if there's... Uh, oh, that's I'd like I'd keep government and politicians out of this as much as possible. Yeah, well, there's pros and cons, right? Um, yeah. Maybe that's another discussion to be had now. What's what what should be the role of government? As I said, it's kind of a downer that we didn't get any of the lawmakers to attend the AI summit, but maybe there's another venue for it. Uh certainly we need to uh, we need to find a way of working together on this. 
and especially partisan politics. Let's not get to a level where, because it's so toxic right now. No? I don't even want to mention who's arguing with who, but I want to keep AI as agnostic as possible so that everyone can contribute. The last thing we want uh, is for people to kind of assign a political bias to people talking about AI. Oh, sabi ni Roland, his lectures are getting ripped off. No? That's why when I decided to do this, open source na tong mga slides na to. If you want to reuse, it's, it's Creative Commons. Uh, sana you mention me if you reuse it. Uh, but I think the bottom line is I want uh, you know people to uh, know, to spread the word. And hopefully we can get more people to attend the Saturday. I thought Saturday would be good. No? It turns out, mas mahina pa pala yung Sabado. Or maybe noontime is not the best time. Maybe we should do this in the evening. But yeah, maybe we'll test it for the next ano, session. Um, okay, so I guess with that, uh, that's the end of this episode. We've now done five uh, five uh, episodes so far, episode zero to four. I think that covers all of the preliminary uh, topics. Um, where we could go from here for the next episode, um, I'm actually uh, considering bringing a second speaker so it can be more of a conversation. So tapos na yung mga preliminaries, so you're all tired of listening to me speak so maybe we'll have uh, a guest in the next one at the same time uh, i'm sure some of the more technical people would like to get uh, or people who want to become technical would like to get into the nitty-gritty of the ai itself mga algorithms so i'm considering creating a separate stream for that no? Parang let's deep dive into the the inner workings of the algorithms themselves no? like the diffusion modeling transformers and even the older algorithms being used i think everybody would like to see that from but still from a practical standpoint no? i don't want to end up doing a, a math lecture you can you can already go to youtube for that or you know that's what all the schools are teaching yeah thanks dean um thank you for joining and thanks to everyone so i think i'll end it here thanks a lot and i'll catch you on the next ai for lunch uh webinar no? so thank you very much <laughs>